Hi, well, welcome, and I'm sorry I'm so late on getting this out to you, but I was in Indianapolis this whole weekend, and it has been so hard to find a computer that I could talk into. So I'm back, and here we are. Um, hey, I just wanted to, to point out that this passage today we're looking at, which is uh, Mark 12, 28 to 34, and if you haven't read it, take a break and read it. And then thanks for joining me back. And so here we go. We're looking at the greatest commandment. And this is one of those passages where they're, uh, remember, they're testing Jesus. We've got all the different, um, different uh, the elders and the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And everyone's trying to test Jesus, trying to get him into this box and uh, get him killed, which happens anyway. But this is the last question that gets asked, apparently. And they stop asking because it's really clear at this point they're not going to beat Jesus. Uh, a teacher of the law, one of the rabbis, one of the scribes, one of the people who wrote down the scripture, they copied the Old Testament, you know, little piece by little piece, they essentially had it mostly memorized, um, asked Jesus what's the greatest commandments. And Jesus goes and says that the, there's two great commandments um, of, of the greatest of all the commandments, neither of which, of course, really is in the Ten Commandments. Jesus says, that number one, is that love God supremely, and number two, love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, that, that between those two, it covers everything. And I mean, that's the reality of this, is that it covers everything. Every law that is in the Old Testament, every law in the New Testament, is covered by those two laws. Love God, love neighbor. And the Pharisee, uh, that's not the Pharisee, the teacher of the law says, hey, good answer. Um, and that says that the, the scripture says that everyone was marveled at his wisdom. You know, as, as we look at uh, the faith, as we look at what we're called to do, called to be, uh, the reality is if we would just live by those two commandments, we wouldn't really need this because everything in the Bible is really truly a, a commentary on what it looks like to love God and love neighbor. Um, in fact, in other nations, the, the, um, there's a whole lot of people who are illiterate, and so they don't have this in terms of having a Bible to read, whatever. They have to go on what they've heard, but mostly they go on what they've experienced. And in terms of what it takes to be a Christian for them and for us, perhaps if we invested more in loving God, what would that look like? And loving neighbor, what would that look like? Our lives and the church might be so much better off. So this morning you may want to just take some time and have a conversation. What does it mean to love God what does it mean to love neighbor? What would that look like if that was the if those were the only two commandments you had to deal with? Hey, good to see you.